So Galatians chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. See with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. All right, let's open in prayer. Father, thank you for this message in Galatians. We just pray you, uh, we pray that you would give us wisdom from this, that we'd be able to apply it to our lives. Thank you for this closing section, and yeah, just help us keep our eyes fixed on you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so this is the closing section of Galatians, and it's very important. And Paul is writing this part himself. If you see in verse 11, it says, See with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. And so there are two options here is uh, why Paul would say that. First, it's likely that he was not a trained, well, he, he wasn't a trained scribe. And so thus, uh, he would likely write Greek letters pretty large. And so uh, in that section, if he had someone else scribe it down, which that's, that's even not defined totally. A lot of times he did have, say, like Silas or Timothy write down. uh, uh, So he would dictate and then they would write it down. So essentially a a scribe. And um, yeah, so sometimes he would do that. But here we see he has very large letters. And so that's option number one. He wasn't a trained scribe. And he's saying, oh, this is so important. I'm going to close this and make sure that I'm writing everything I want to get out here because this is important, and he summarizes the entire book in this one part. Um, and if you remember, the, the start of the book was kind of a defense of who he was, and then this last part's the, the summary. Uh, the other option here in why he would have large letters is it could be because he mentions that he, uh, that if, if people would yank out their eyes and give it to him, then you know, they would. Uh, and uh, it's likely that he had, he had an eye problem and couldn't see too clearly, and thus he would have also had trouble writing small Greek letters, especially the minuscules and all that. And so um, either way, he's conveying that he's writing this part himself. It's a touch of genuineness or authenticity or extreme importance. He's saying, I, this is important. I care about you. It's a personal touch. He, he wants them to know the truth. And so this is the conclusion is what he's saying. And then uh, verses 12 and 13 Here, as many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. And so Paul's statement here is about the motives of of these people coming in and uh, saying they're just trying to get recognition from other people. They're trying to get the praise from others. They're trying to get numbers. They're trying to do all these things that would, you know, pad their stats, as, as Stephen would, would say, and uh, making your, your own self look better. Um, but yeah, uh, the point here, even those who um, are by display of the law following it, by circumcision, um, even, even those who, who display that, they can't follow the entire law. And so uh, if they preach the gospel, they wouldn't be so popular, they'd be persecuted. And on the other end, they're just going for recognition. And so if they can follow all these laws better than other people and be like, oh, this is, this is the gospel here, and they're kind of the, the fathers of that kind of rehashed heresy here. Um, uh, now that Jesus has come, the law is, is revealed to be, hey, this is the arrow pointing to Jesus. And so following after the law, um, you don't have to do X, Y, and Z to gain favor with God. Um, it's, it's very Pharisaic. If you, if you remember, Paul used to be very much in that camp. But the better they do at following those rules in that camp, the, the better they look. And uh, Paul is saying this is their motive. They, they're just trying to, um, they're trying to look good. They're trying to have, have you to brag about instead of uh, pointing them to truth that Jesus has told them. If you remember um, earlier on in the book, too, that Paul reminds them, I'm an apostle, and this is the message that God revealed to me. And if even an angel preaches a different one, then let them be eternally accursed. And um, 
And so Paul is saying, hey, I, I have authority. I, I know what I'm talking about. These are fly-by-night teachers, and they're teaching you that you have to do all these things. Uh, you, have to keep the, you have to keep the law of Moses, especially through the physical sign of circumcision. And so for all the men, they would have to go get that operation in order to hopefully gain some favor with God. Uh, is it necessarily a fun surgery, I would imagine? Um, but uh, and, and it's, this is not even saying, uh, this passage isn't saying that, you know, in America a lot of the babies are circumcised and a lot of it's a, a health concern, that type of thing, and, um, or I guess a health benefit to be circumcised. It's not saying if you're circumcised and you're obligated to follow the law because you had that done, you know, when you were a baby. It's not saying that either. Um, but Paul is saying our, our glory should be in Jesus. Uh, the, the importance is that we are made a new creation, and he gets to this in verse 15. Um, but again, he, he says uh, his motive is not for, for his own pride, for his own uh, bragging, for his own boasting, but he boasts in the, the cross of Jesus, and so in Jesus and everything that relates to him and what he's done. Um, so he's revealing the truth and what he knows that God has told him to do, and so he's saying, don't be swayed by these people. These people just want you for their numbers. They want to boost their own ego and yeah, they don't know the truth, and they're trying to sway you. Uh, but I've heard this from God myself, and you need to follow it. And, um, and again, as in verse 15, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision uh, avails anything but a new creation. And so whether um, Timothy was circumcised or not at, at any time, uh, whether Titus wasn't or not, or so, I guess, in that, in that case, um, it, it doesn't matter. The, the issue is faith in Jesus. And so, um, it says, as Paul says in Romans 10, 9, and even verse 8, this is the, this is the word we've received and which we teach. Uh, and that is, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And it's not, if you go to four, if you go to um, four temple gatherings each month and um, and observe every festival without fault, and um, even, even when you're deathly ill, um, then you'll gain favor with God, and you might be able to get into heaven. And that's the thing, too. It's, it's not about chance. When we talk about hope, it's, it's not a, a thing of chance. It's we either have our faith in Jesus or we don't, and we don't need to be putting our faith in other things because that's straying away from the truth. And so uh, if we're trying to gain favor with God by, by doing things, um, or we're, we're trying to rely on our own works to get us to heaven, then we're missing the mark. And uh, yeah, we need to, to correct that for sure. Um, and there's the issue of, hey, we, we, we love Jesus, so we obey him. That's not saying that we're supposed to disband all works because we're trying to avoid having every, every focus away from Jesus. It's like, well, if I obey Jesus, then I might get prideful about, oh, well, I, I, I obey Jesus today, I'm doing well. Um, but you know you, you can have some satisfaction in your progress for sure. It's not, yeah. So this is this is not a masochistic uh, faith. It's not something where we are we are supposed to disband all that Jesus taught. Because especially if we're following Him, we're supposed to do as He's He's taught us. But again, out of love, we're supposed to obey Him. He says, "If you love me, you'll obey my commandments." In John fourteen. So, um, so we need to do that. Uh, but again, our, our salvation is because of Jesus, and our hope is because of Jesus and in Jesus. And just as Paul pointed out in Galatians 3 and 4, where he talks about we can be children of Abraham and thus heirs of the promise, because God promised, I'm going to give you a, a, a seed, and from him I'll, uh, I'll bless the nations. And that blessing is really eternal redemption. It wasn't just the land. It wasn't just the son. It was down the line. He was going to have the Messiah, and in him, all who believe in him will be saved. And again, we're in an age in which in all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we have hope in Jesus alone, and that's not a maybe. That's not a, hey, if we do enough good works, maybe it'll, the weight scale will balance itself out, and we'll, we'll find favor and make it to the positive version of the afterlife. Or, you know, we're not... Uh, maybe trying to do enough good things for the, for the universe that we escape the cycle of suffering. It's kind of tragic. That's, that just means you're gone. Um, but it's, it's something where we have hope in heaven. It's a restored Eden. It's what God intended for creation. And yeah, when we, when we 
get to heaven because we believe in Jesus and because of what he's done and our response of faith to him and obedience. And that, I think you could argue too, he pushes you in that direction. Um, yeah, we can rejoice and it's something to look forward to. And so that hope is a definite thing in the future we just look forward to now. Um, so this new creation, is God makes us new. God makes all things new. Uh, he talks about that in Revelation also. When the new Jerusalem is revealed, behold, I make all things new. And uh, he does that with, with us as well. And um, we're in that whole all category there. Uh, we're 2 Corinthians 5.17. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so that rule that Paul is talking about, he mentions, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor circ uh, or uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. And here he's meaning rule as in a standard. And so the way you, you live your life as a new creation. And uh, so this is something where we, we walk in that as well, that we are made new. We don't follow after the flesh, like in Galatians 5. We're not supposed to do the works of the flesh. That reaps destruction. We're supposed to follow the Spirit and, and walk uh, in what he leads. Um, and then Paul continues. He says, From now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And a lot of people debate what this means in this verse. From, from now on, let no one trouble me. Um, one option is he's just saying, uh, I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear anything from you guys. I don't think that's what it's getting at because he, he very much reveals he cares about these people and he wants to, to know that they're walking in the truth. And um, even so, to, in other letters, he says, yeah, I delight when I hear how you've walked in the truth, like the Thessalonians. Um, but here, uh, I think what he's saying here, from now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear my, my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I've suffered enough. I've endured persecution. Uh, don't be a part of that frustration. You know, follow after what I've just told you, because this is the way of truth, and I don't want to, essentially, I don't want to hear an, a bad report, and I, I want to see that you're walking in the truth. I think that fits in what, in what Paul's hopes were and, and what he's said in other books as well. Um, if you remember, Paul was stoned, he was beaten, shipwrecked three times, etc., everything. So he's gone through a ton just because he's followed after God. And uh, just as a, a side point here, we do go through adversity as well as opposition. We do have an enemy, Satan, who hates it when we follow after Jesus. So, um, so those who follow after Jesus you know, will endure persecution. Um, we're supposed to endure hardship as a good soldier in Christ Jesus. And, yeah, uh, Philippians 1.29, for, you, for to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. So it's part of the Christian walk. And then in Matthew 5.11 and 12, it's not something to avoid. If you think it's like the path of least resistance, um, where, where people, uh, in, in any conversation, a social situation, um, I think part of the fleshly nature, too, follows that the path of least resistance, where if someone says, for example, well, do you think Jesus is the only way? And, of course, the answer, Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me, and he's the only way. But you have people like Joel Osteen who are like, oh, I don't know, like, I don't want to speak for God. And it's like, you're a prophet. You are someone who speaks for, speaks for so you're speaking for God. And so, uh, but it, I think it's a fleshly thing too to kind of shy away from a, a situation in which we can speak words of life and the words of God and what he said uh, and instead say, oh, well, uh, I don't know. Or, well, you know, he's a nice person. I don't have to tell him and that type of thing. But it goes beyond whether you're a nice person or not because that's going to be filthy rags regardless of whether you know, you're nice or not. You can be the worst the, the meanest person on the earth, the, the worst troll, the um, whatever. But, um, but you come to know Jesus, you are a new creation. And same with just being a nice person, because you're still a sinner in God's eyes until you are made right through Jesus and made a new creation. And so just like that verse in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, where we, uh, we take on his righteousness, he takes on our sin. And so on the cross, what he's done for us is he's taken on that penalty. So we don't have to uh, try to gain favor with God time and time again through, through works. It's something where we just we walk in love, we walk in, in freedom and peace, 
it's not something of strain. Um, I will say too, though, it is it is kind of a matter of battle too. Though there is that element in there because Ephesians six, for example, where uh, we need to pull put on the full armor of God and uh, fight the good fight of faith. And so there are a lot of analogies we can use there, but it's worth following. It's difficult, but yeah, it's definitely worth it. Um, but hey, Jesus says in Matthew 5, 11 and 12, Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you uh, falsely for, for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so we are blessed if we are persecuted for following Jesus. And as Paul said, he's suffered, and those who were bringing in this false doctrine as well were trying to avoid that persecution and instead trying to boast in uh, these people who they were garnering to their their cause um, so kind of in maybe a parallel there with like business sales once you get someone there you can brag about your business sales so you can go in shark tank you can tell them the exact amount you've earned so how many people you've you swayed over to your way of, of thought and so these people were more about the census style of success as opposed to the, the truth which Paul was revealing, and so we need to follow after the truth uh, and what was revealed, um, yeah, through man by inspiration of God. And so Paul closes with a blessing and, and wishes grace on them and with their spirits. And yeah, we are um, fortunate to have the grace of God, and it's uh, we are blessed people for um, for God doing that. And so Him Him reaching down to us, sending His Son for us providing him as a sacrifice so we could come back to him. And so, yeah, let's follow after the truth and not after heresies and extra pluses here. Um, but yeah, we'll focus on Jesus and he and remember he, that he is our hope. Um, so in summary of Galatians, uh, just reminding you of uh, what we've gone over just briefly. Um, initially, false teachers came into Galatia. They taught that you had to be physically circumcised to have any part with God. And Paul starts with his shock that the people of Galatia turned to their message alarmingly quickly. And Paul mentions that these are fly-by-night teachers. They are clearly motivated by their own flesh and greed. He also stresses that he is an apostle who has seen Jesus and heard his message directly from him. And so they need to listen. And so that's the first two chapters are especially, especially like, listen. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah. Listen. Yeah. And so... Uh, you have that, the uh, the pay attention first few chapters, and then it's extremely important to obey the truth, and we have hope in Jesus alone, not in what we do or what we observe. And then Paul draws out this comparison between law and grace, and really spirit, flesh and spirit. Um, and so the law is not our focus. The law is essentially a pit stop. Paul compares it to a schoolmaster. He says it's, it was what trains us in showing us that we are sinners and that we need a savior. Uh, we, we need forgiveness. And so the law teaches us how awful and how corrupt we are and how we fall short of God's standards. It says all have fallen short of God's standards, uh, of, of the glory of God even. And um, yeah, so we need a Savior. And then Paul reminds us about the promise of blessing to Abraham. And through faith, we can be children of Abraham and heirs, participants in the inheritance promised to him. So that's full redemption. It wasn't just a land to go to or a single son. It was a blessing that would come through the ultimate descendant down the line, the Messiah, Jesus, the one who was promised. So, uh, just as a challenge, which one are you following? Are you following after the law? Are you following after the things that you do to, to try to earn favor with God? Um, it could be a matter of legalism and, and trying to fence yourself in and say, well, if I'm within these guidelines, then I'm, I'm earning more favor with God. And so kind of quantifying it like that is, is usually pretty dangerous. Um, but, yeah, the law is good. It's not saying that the law is, is bad, but the law is good. It's simply an arrow, though. It's pointing to who we need. And, yeah, the other option, are you following after Jesus in faith? And, again, we can't earn our salvation. Jesus has sacrificed himself, and what we need to do is to respond in faith. Uh, we can't recite 500 Hail Marys. We can't pray a thousand times to earn extra favor. We can't uh, brush our teeth 10 times a day to get more brownie points with God. You know, it's not exactly uh, how things work. Uh, and 
you remember in Isaiah, that righteousness is as filthy rags and uh, it's kind of like wiping the floor with a bunch of cloths and saying, oh, well, here's my, here's my clean slate. I've done all these good things. And it's like, you. So uh, it's, it's not about that. We should obey his commands out of love, but we first need to have faith in Jesus because he has done what we needed, which was a way back to God the Father. He took on our penalty because God is holy. He has to be just. And he's uh, done justice through the cross of Jesus Christ. And that's what leads to salvation. Um, so we need to follow that. And uh, just as an, an extra two is um, we really need to know the, the message of the cross and uh, the resurrection and uh, the importance of Jesus. And um, it's like those counterfeit bills. You can tell them if you know the originals. And, um, so if you, if you know... One million counterfeits, uh, and then you see another counterfeit, you're just going to see, oh, this is another another bill. But if you know the original, and then you can have that as comparison, yeah, you know the differences. And so you can say, well, this, this color is wrong, or you know, this doesn't have the right watermark. But we need to know the gospel so we don't end up in the same position as the Galatians here. And um, the Galatians uh, did, have a, did have several very, very faithful early church fathers and that type of thing. So... Um, it seemed that things did turn around and, and there were a lot of faithful people in that remnant. Um, so that is, that's some good news. It wasn't as if Galatia just completely fell off and there was no one left who was a Christian. The end. Um, that would have been bad. But yeah, people need to know the truth and they need to follow after the truth. And it's extremely important. We should care just as much as Paul did for these people. So, um, so yeah, anyone in our lives too that, that are starting to follow after X, Y, or Z, false doctrines we need to we need to make sure they're right on the right path it's like the angle you you go on the right path you're you're with it but if you're off just a little bit and you keep going you're further and further away so um yeah need to nip that in the bud okay but with that uh let's know the truth and let's follow after jesus and let's close in prayer father thank you so much for your word and that it has truth and that uh, we can have certainty in, in what we know we just thank you for the work of Jesus, and we just, uh, yeah, we confess any sins in our hearts, Lord, uh, before you, and we ask for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Uh, help us be pure before you. Help us walk in your truth. Lord, if we're following after anything that's extra or wrong uh, in our walk with you, just uh, expose those things and um, let us really uh, walk with you in purity as much as we possibly can. Thank you so much for the uh, the freedom and uh and the peace that the Spirit brings, and help us uh, be honoring to Him and listen to His leading. And we just pray for a great week. Uh, give us opportunity to share you and help us be faithful in sharing. Pray all this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, uh,